What's up, everybody? Jason here from jazbeescasebreaks.com. We just sold out another bounty break. Uh, this is 22-23 uh, Panini Donner Soccer Hobby Edition. Three box break. And this is actually break number three. Sorry, I, I rolled number five, but I meant to say number three. Uh, number four is on the website. So this is break number three. And again, of course, 15 total spots. We get you random links from the list below. Uh, all those teams there. Tons of different cards, guys. And, of course, we do have the bounties. If we hit any of these serial numbered cards in any one of those bounty breaks, you have an opportunity to win. $250 in break credit, $750 in break credit, $1,500 in break credit. If you hit the exact serial numbers there. Now, let's do the break, guys. Let's roll. It's a three and a four, seven times. Good luck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nicoba down to Canard. Korea Republic and Barcelona. I want to say Oregon picked up a pretty good quarterback too, whether it was his last uh, signing signing day or previous. There's like a big quarterback that Oregon has as a prospect. But obviously Bo Nix is back, and he played really well last year for us. So whoever that is is going to have to sit another year probably. All right, Nick Cole with Korea Republic, Robert with uh, Inter Milan, Manchester United, and Roma. Uh, Joe Dreesen with U.S. Men's and Women, Sporting CP, uh, as well as uh, Benfica and uh, Mexico, Manchester City, Real Madrid, um, uh, England and Liverpool, Darren with Juventus, uh, Robert right there with Chessa, Chessa, Czech? I don't know, it's, it's not a Czech. Sorry, guys, not a big soccer guy. Nick with Serbia, Robert with France, FC Porto for Nick, Darren with Chelsea, Robert with Colombia. Kennard, Portugal, Nick, Olympic, uh, Shane, Wales, Robert with Germany, Joe Andres, Norway, Shane with Atletico, and Robert Ronco with Ajax, AC Milan, Italy, Argentina, and Barcelona for Kennard. All right, if anybody wants to make any quick trades, I'll leave it up there. The Tennessee guy that you're talking about, Justin, is that that Nico kid? It looks like Oregon did get a top 10 QB in his last uh, recruiting class. They got Austin Novosad from Dripping Springs, Texas. But they still have Ty Thompson and then of course uh, Bo Nix. Alright guys, I'm just going to close the trade window then. And then, uh, 
uh, my computer, I, I don't know if Joe ever ordered new toner or, or, or ink, so I'll have to print it out on the back. But I'll leave that there for you guys. So we can go through it if need be. And remember, guys, the serial numbers we're looking for is. Uh, 24 out of 99, 100 out of 199, and 196 out of 299. Now, I had two stacks in the locker right there, guys. We'll go 1, 2, 3 left, 4, 5, 6 right. Those are the last two right there. And we'll go 4. So, 1, 2, 3, left side, 4, 5, 6, right side. Awesome, awesome, Randall. I'll add it to the schedule. After this break, at least. Alright, well, I'm not sure what is potentially still left in here, guys. But we did have a killer last break, though, I will say. We hit the night moves, the kaboom. We hit Ronaldo, uh, Ronaldo Auto. I think we had a KDB. Then we had a KDB out of 25 gold or something like that. Uh, 76 out of 99. That's Henry Martin. Gareth Bale, 17 out of 99. Virginia Des, Dusan. And Paolo Dybala for Argentina. The beautiful game. Argentina's going to rob her uncle. 11 out of 199. Brandon Aronson. So there you go, Rob, on the board.
fifty-three out of ninety-nine, Raid. One seventy out of one ninety nine. That is uh, Leon uh, Goretzka. What's up, Mark? Two tough games for me because I want to believe that, like, I want to believe that the Sacramento Kings will beat the Warriors because they have been the better team. And I know if Oliver's here, you know, he's going to feel the same way. But I, I think I want to doubt them. Because they're playing a team like the Warriors that have all the experience. Now I don't want to. I don't want to flip flip sides and agree with Oliver and be like, yeah, they're gonna win and we're gonna prove all these people wrong. Because I personally don't feel like they will. But if they do, great. But I just feel like the Warriors at this time of year is a lot harder to beat than during the regular season, especially the season they had. I didn't get to see the. I didn't really get to see to watch too much the Knicks Cavs throughout the season, to be honest. Katarina, eighty four to one sixty five. So I really don't know about that one. I'd assume Cavs would be more of the favorite because they're at home. Uh, Thirty nine out of ninety nine. So that one I don't really know, but I think I'm gonna go with the Warriors to at least win the series. At least I don't know if they'll win tonight's game, but. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Who do you have today, Mark? Also, that was a Real Madrid David Alaba kick Kings as well. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel the same way. I, I get what you're trying to say. Maybe they do win tonight, right? The hype, you know, the first time in the playoffs in what, 20 plus years? I don't even know how long it's been, honestly. But yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, I think the Warriors might win the series. But yeah, I mean, the, the Kings have definitely turned around, you know, with those trades and just in general. I mean, they had a much better season than the Thunder did, but I think the Thunder obviously turnaround was just as crazy as theirs. I think they were 1-2 and two in, like, most improved, like, turnaround, like, differential. I think the Thunder won, like, 16 more games this season than they did last year. And then number one was, like, the Sacramento Kings, I think, with a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, if they could somehow beat the Warriors, and then obviously that's big momentum for them, confidence, experience, but it's like, it, what I'm trying to say is that it's not going to shock me if, like, the Warriors win the series and, like, it's kind of a cakewalk, you know? Because then, it, then it, it fits the narrative of, like, oh, well, we kind of expected this, man. I mean, we're talking the Warriors, Steph Curry, Clay, Draymond, and, you know, 
all the playoff experience, all the, t all the championships they won. And you kind of expected that to happen. But you think the Cavs win easily? It seems like to me, for people that love the Knicks, they've been really on a roller coaster this season with them. But, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, Cavs, dude, look pretty good, though, from looking at it on paper. They have a pretty good squad, that's for sure. Got two big guys with Allen and Mobley. Obviously, they got Spider. I think Garland's still there, right? And Coral. Looks good. Vinny Jr., 11 out of 199. Crystal Dunn, Kick Kings. Alon, that's Norway edition. Diogo Costa. 42 out of 99, that was close. Yeah, that Thunder game was really hard to watch yesterday, man, honestly. It was fine, like, the first two quarters. The third quarter was just god-awful. But I, I had a feeling I really wasn't confident going into the game. I knew they had a chance, obviously. But they just don't match up really well with, with Minnesota because it, they, they don't have no big guys. Right now, I don't even think they have anybody besides Cuckoo, which I think was coming back from injury, hasn't really even played much, if anything. That's like over seven feet or seven feet tall, so they don't they don't have big guys. So, and obviously being younger and experienced, obviously kind of plays a factor into that too. But, but yeah, I, I'm I'm excited though for the future. That's for sure. I I really wanted them to win, although I think they would have smoked by Jokic and <laughs> and Denver in this playoffs. But Diogo Jota. Nice one there for Portugal. That is uh, 31 out of 49. But yeah, I mean, I think the big the big task is obviously to get Chet healthy, and then maybe still go get a, a big guy because I think Chet naturally should be playing a four, not the five. But he could play the five since he is pretty big. But go get go go out and get someone someone pretty big, you know, Julian Alvarez. And I think they'll be just fine, man. Like obviously. Picks don't mean as much, but I mean, they have more than enough trade ammo for a lot of teams if they're wanting picks, right? They're going to have 15 first rounders in the next three years. Two, two first in this one, and then like four and four in the next one, and it's ridiculous like what it is for them. But it was still fun though. I just hated that SGA got a big black eye yesterday, dude. He got elbowed bad by Gobert. At first, I thought he was kind of just like faking it, but then they showed the replay, and I was like, "Holy smokes, is he thinking his eye like swole up?" Basically, at the end of the game. But again, this was this was a rebuilding year, so for them to to make the play in, win a play in, and then and then at least uh, give it a fighting effort is more than enough. I think people were thinking. Start of the season, this is going to be a tank for for Wabanyama, whatever his name is, you know. So I think uh, I think it'll be just fine, man. 
I think he did. I think the elbow literally cut him right under the cheek. So he did have a little cut. And then just a bruise. And I feel like by the end of the game, his eye was pretty much closed. He got hit pretty hard, dude, honestly. Like I said, I didn't see it in the replay. I didn't see it live as as good. But when they showed the slow-mo replay, he got elbowed big time by Gobert. I think he went to the back to make sure he didn't get a concussion. I think that's more of what it was. Because they said he was a little... Ooh, that's nice right there. 74 out of 199. He was a little wobbly, I guess. I know. I mean, I think I said I, I'm, I'm more than happy with what they did this year, and more excited for the for the years to come for sure. I still think they should go out and get a big guy though. I mean, Chad can play the five, but I'd rather him play like the four, and kind of alternate. Let's go get another big guy. They just need size if they want to match up against some of these teams like the Timberwolves and Nuggets and stuff like that. But I think other than that, they got the guards, they got the shooters. But you can always improve. KDB Relic. And it looked like Chet too. He, he put on a little bit of muscle from now to the previous when he got injured. I look, I've seen some photos of him in practice. He, it looks like he probably gained an extra 10 pounds, so... Obviously, the kid is still going to be growing, right? He's still not 21 years old, right? I think he's like 20. So, get a little bit more weight on him. That should help him out big time. You feeling good, Oliver? You nervous? What's your take, man? Sacramento winning this series or what? Ooh, nice hurling hold on. 65 out of 99. That's Man City. Just going to Robert Runkel. Kings in six. I know you have the confidence, Oliver. I hope that for you, man. But what happens if hypothetically the Warriors just somehow just dominate and, and win like in five or six? Let's just say six. Let's say the Warriors win in six. That's a disappointment to you? Do you think uh, the Kings just played poorly? Or do you think that's when you start kind of to believe, okay, maybe, maybe looking at the series, my Sacramento wasn't really ready? You know. You're saying house money because they played better than what you thought they would this year, Oliver? Because I was just talking about it. The Thunder had the biggest, like, the second most uh, win differential this season, only to the Kings. That's how I felt like for uh, for the Thunder. So yeah, I got feel you.
But what would the Kings have to address if uh, they don't look good this series and end up losing it uh, in a very bad way? Like, would they have to get more players, or do you think they'll be just fine, just more getting this experience? Uh, 33 out of 99. I hope for your sake, Oliver. <laughs> I would I would take it a series at a time. <laughs> I don't like to I personally don't like to say shit like that. I I, I like to take it a series or a game at a time. Juan Cadralo. Daniel James for Wales. 26 out of 49. That's true, I mean, but defense usually tightens up and during the playoffs. I mean, it's... I don't know. I mean, I like to think it's a lot different atmosphere, a lot different game. Like, it's just... It's a total different beast, you know? Everybody is zero zero now, you know. Sixty two out of ninety nine. That is Fernando Bonici. The marbles is a different color, actually. Uh, we have uh, Medi Taremi to one sixty five. And out of forty nine, uh, Antonin for uh, Chessa. That's going to be Robert Ronk, I believe, right? There you go. We have uh, Ariella. 115 out of 199. Luka Modric, 9 of 10. That's pretty nice. Kid Series there for Real Madrid. That's going to rob a runkle.
Enzo Fernandez to one sixty five. Alrighty, folks, there you go. So, Dunzo there, guys. All the hits there. So, appreciate it, folks. No bounty sit here. Uh, but we'll have another chance for another one, guys. Appreciate it, guys. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com.